Our next presenter is Kaz Machida from the UC Davis in the USA. That would be California. Uh, his title is Effects of Enzymatic Extraction of Oil and Protein from Chickpea Flour on Protein Functionality. Kaz, would you begin? Yeah, thank you so much. So um, from editing my and revisions, I've realized my title is kind of confusing. So a new and improved title is Effects of Enzymatic Hydrolysis on Extractability of Oil and Protein and Protein Functionality from Full Fat Chickpea Flour. So to give some background, we've seen an explosion in plant-based food options, um, including Impossible Foods, Beyond Meat, Just Egg, and to supply this increasing demand, chickpeas can be used uh, for functional and digestible plant-based proteins. And to extract these pro the chickpeas, the aqueous and enzyme-assisted extraction process can be used to get the proteins as well as the lipids. So the scope of this project was to fill a gap in the research. There's limited understanding of the effects of extraction conditions on extractability and the connection between that and functionality of chickpea macronutrients. So the goal of this study was to elucidate extraction parameters on the extractability and functionality. So to explain the process, we take full fat chickpea flour that doesn't need to be defatted by hexane and we mix it with water at a solid to liquid ratio of one to 10. We do the extraction at a temperature of 50 degrees, pH nine, and it's vigorously mixed for 60 minutes. There's four treatments that we use, the AEP, which is no enzyme, and the EAP, which uses protease at 0.5% for the 60 minutes, with EAEP two and three undergoing 30 minute carbohydrates pretreatment at pH six. So the extracted slurries are then centrifuged and separate into the solids, which are the insolubles, and then liquid fraction, which is further separated into the skim and the cream and free oil. The chickpea we used were, was a steamed chickpea flour of the Kabuli variety, and our approximate analysis found that it had around 7% oil and close to 26% protein um, to begin with. So after conducting extractions on chickpea flour, we see that enzymatic treatments uh, increase the protein and oil yields significantly compared to that of the AEP. Within the enzymatic treatments, we don't see a difference in the oil and we only see a slight improvement in the protein yields. Additionally, molecular weight analysis showed that enzymatically treated proteins were significantly smaller in size AEP proteins go up to 97.4 kilodaltons, while the EAP proteins only go up to 21.5. This was further confirmed by our degree of hydrolysis analysis, which showed that uh, it showed an increase from 10.3 to 25.5%. This is most likely due to proteolysis of the proteins by the protease. And to test functionality, we first looked at solubility. At pH 4, we can see significant improvement with the enzymatic treatment. We chose pH 4 because chickpeas have a PI of 4.3. And this is important to us because this shows that enzymatically treated proteins can be applied in food applications of acidic conditions and not just basic conditions. Next, we looked at digestibility. That increased significantly as well from 83.181 to 94.67% digestibility. Uh, we believe that the protease pre-digests the proteins and creates smaller peptides that are therefore more easier to digest and absorb. So in conclusion, we've been able to elucidate the impact of the AEP and the EAEP on chickpeas and seen an Im definite improvement in the yields for the EAEP. And we also saw functional analysis increase significantly especially for solubility at acidic pH and digestibility of the EAEP proteins. And identifications of these extraction conditions is key to improving process feasibility and producing protein fractions for targeted food applications in the food industry. To wrap this up, I'd like to thank the USDA ARS Pulse Initiative for funding this project. 
I'd like to thank my PI, Dr. Juliana Bell and Dr. Fernanda Diaz for their support and to all my lab mates for their encouragement. And finally, thank you to the audience for listening to my presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kaz. Very interesting approach. Uh, I have so many questions, uh, but I, I know that our judges are very curious as well. So I will limit myself to one, and that is, tell me which protease you used. Uh, we use a Protex 6L, which is a alkaline endoprotease. Okay. Judges, would you like to start? I can start first. Uh, Tess, I, I enjoy your presentation. It's really, really interesting. My first question, why did you choose uh, chicken PSDR material for the, for the research? Um, well, our <laughs> grant was given to us to study chickpeas. And also, I believe that chickpeas are a good substrate for plant-based proteins because they have a mild taste. Um, a lot of the legumes that are used sometimes have a very beany, very distinct taste. Um, and that can, that can come out in food applications where you don't want any kind of beany flavor. All right. Uh, maybe I missed this, uh, some you know, information. So when you uh, extract the protein from your uh, aqueous process, what's the protein content in, you know, in your protein sample? So the protein, the yields that I showed were uh, no, based I was asking for the protein content, not the yield. Of, of, uh, of a specific fraction? Or... Yeah, I assume you, you, know, you, you get your cream fraction. You might also have your protein, what are you called? You know, the sample you used for measure the protein solubility. So what's the protein content in, in the sample you use for measuring protein solubility? So for protein solubility, we use the Dumas method. Um, we, we take our, some freeze dried protein and then uh, we dissolve it in a solution and try to see a difference between the total protein and then the protein in the supernatant. Um, and then the protein that we have in the skim especially was around 2%. All right, thank you. I have a lot more questions, but I, <laughs> I stop here now. So maybe I, I, I can start asking. So thank you, Cass, for this very interesting uh, presentation. Um, do you know that uh, most of the time P your, your title is uh, linking protein with functional properties? And most of the time, Functional properties are not only solubility or digestibility, but it can be also forming, gelling, emulsifying properties. Do you have an idea of what is the impact of your process on these functional properties? I believe that the foaming from the literature that we saw, uh, foaming pro properties, water absorption, oil absorption improve with enzymatic treatment. And I I hope that I could I could do this, um, and possibly in the future I think it, it should be done. Thank you. Um, adding enzyme in your in your extraction process will uh, will have a, a cost impact. Do you have any idea of the of the evaluation of this on your global process? Yeah, so my next paper and hopefully my next presentation is uh, doing economic analysis. And um, we actually saw that the enzyme in, in terms of large scale, it's, it's very minimal in comparison to uh, other, other factors like the cost of the flour, especially. And um, the enzyme we use, we, we from our cost analysis, we, we showed that like it's, it's very minimal in comparison to the chickpea flour cost. And my last question is about, again, like uh, Jinping, uh, the, the purity. You know, there are two products right now on the market at the industrial scale. And one is uh, obtained by um, uh, full fat uh, extraction and they, they reach 70% protein purity. 
And the other one is obtained after defatting of the flour and they reach 85% protein purity. What is your level of protein purity in your extraction? So we did not actually do any protein recovery, like any ultrafiltration or isolated precipitation. Uh, so I cannot give you a specific protein purity. Um, hopefully that, that'll be a future study. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for the great presentation, Kaz. I really enjoy it. I only have one question. So uh, could you share some opinion on the limitation of this extraction method? So the limitations of this extraction method is definitely the oil being infiltrating the skin, which has the majority of the protein. When you have something with little oil like chickpeas, um, it's, it's very hard to create a separation between the cream and the free oil and then the skim. So you get a lot of the oil that goes into the skim and you can actually see that in the yields. The, the oil yield in the skim is considerably higher than the previous studies using the same process. And the other substrates that were used were peanuts and soy, which are much greater in oil content than chickpeas. And so because of that, like there, there's definite limitations. And I think the, a, a good step would be to try to improve upon the separation process and, and try to separate the lipids out of the proteins better. Okay. Because we, that, that affects this, uh, the functionality as well. Okay, just, just have a follow up question because I noticed that during the extraction, the temperature is 50 degree and mm -hmm. the extraction time is uh, one hour. So do you think uh, this condition will negatively affect on the oil quality due to oxidation? Um, I think that that is a definitely a possibility. Um, I, I think that's another future study that should look into that. Um, and yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, judges. You know, Kaz, we have a, an old expression and that is that the larger the island of knowledge, the longer the shoreline of ignorance. And as you see here, you know, you do something, you present it, and so many questions. You've got years worth of material to look into. Um, that's one of the reasons research is much more exciting than people generally realize. So we have our curiosity. Thank you very much, Kaz.